Hello. Have you guys ever heard of the Wittig or Wittig reaction? I don't care how you, how you say it. Don't worry about it. Um, but yeah, have you ever heard of the Wittig reaction? It's a really, really cool and awesome reaction that you learn about in Orgo 2. What a nerd. Hey, no judging. OK, so anyway, um, and it involves, um, whoop, it involves a ketone or an aldehyde as your starting material. And then you react it with something called a phosphonium illid. Uh, which is this molecule over here. In case any of you guys were unsure about how to make an illid or what an illid is, uh, be sure to check out my extra video that I made on the side that goes more into detail about this. But anyway, a illid is basically just a molecule with a positive charge and a negative charge. And the atoms that contain these charges must be right next to each other or on adjacent atoms, Okay, like this. And because this specific type of um, illid for the Wittig reaction is called a phosphonium illid. The positive charge is on the the positive charge is on the phosphorus, and you have a negative charge on the carbon. Okay. Now, um, in case any of you were wondering what the pH was, a phosphonium illid will contain usually three benzene rings or phenyl groups on it. So that's why I abbreviated it as pH. And um, the reason why I have this form of the molecule over here is that I want you guys to really, really be aware of that that the illid can really can be really easily and sneakily disguised as, as, a, um, as this form over here, because there's a resonance that can occur between the electrons of the carbon uh, with the negative charge. That's also called a carbon ion. It can resonate over here and form that double bond. So yeah, I know it doesn't look that different, but I know why. On my final for Orgo 2, I got it confused. I, I saw this, the, my professor put this reagent on the test. And I saw it, and I just blanked out. I had no idea what it would do. So I just really wanted to make stress it to you guys so you don't make the same mistake as me, OK? So the illid can be disguised as this form. And it's essentially the same thing because of the resonance. OK, so anyway, um, it is your turn to get active because the Wittig reaction is useful for turning ketones or aldehydes um, into something else. So take a second and figure out what my mysterious product is over here and come back, OK? Now you guys can test um, how much you actually remember from lecture and how much your, stu your studying has paid off, OK? Uh, take a second, hit pause if you need to. Alrighty, did you guys get alkenes for your mysterious product? Well, that's what I was, didn't show you before. Uh, the Wittig reaction turns ketones and aldehydes into alkenes. As you can see, uh, if you're starting off with a ketone, right, all that happens is that the carbon chain of, of your phosphonium illid is basically transported onto your ketone right over here. Okay? And the same is true for the aldehyde case here. The carbon chain gets transported on to the aldehyde, and now you have alkenes for your final products. And um, furthermore, the oxygen basically got removed and is now here, bond double bonded with your phosphorus in the form of a phosphine oxide. Alrighty. So the, the way I think about the um, Wittig reaction is that we're essentially just using the phosphonium illid to sneak on this carbon chain onto the carbon, this carbon right here, and use the phos phosphorus to kind of trick the oxygen and kidnap it. And that's, how, that's why it ends up with it in its final product. OK? OK, so bottom line is that in the Wittig reaction, you're using the phosphonium illid to pluck off the oxygen and sneak on a carbon to where the oxygen used to be, or where it was. OK? All right, now if you guys want to see a harder example that includes some exceptions that occurs in the Wittig reaction, just hang tight for one second, OK? One. OK, so now uh, we have a harder problem now. I want, you to tr I want you guys to try out this problem over here, where we react with, uh, start, we start off with two aldehydes. They're exactly the same. And we're going to react them with different phosphonium illids. And we're going to see what the products we get are. OK? So um, yeah, notice that this illid right has a carbon chain over here and a carbon chain over here. And this illid has a benzene ring over here and hydrogen. And hopefully you guys have recognized that benzene rings are really special in organic chemistry. So we may get two different products from this reaction. But yeah, OK. So um, yeah, take a second, try this out. Do hit pause, OK? Do it.
Alrighty, did you guys get these two products over here? If you did, nice job. If you didn't, it's okay, don't worry about it. It's a little bit of a tough question. But um, yeah, so notice that when we do our reaction, right, we end up getting a Z, a Z or cis alkene on the top, right? Meaning that the higher priority groups that are attached on the alkene, they are on the same side, okay? See, this carbon chain has higher pr priority over the hydrogen, and this carbon chain here that's longer is, has a higher priority over this carbon chain over here. And notice how they're on the same side, so that's why we call it a Z-alkene or a cis-alkene. Um, yeah, and this is typically less stable because when you, when you have big carbon chains or just atoms that are closer together, it's not, it's not stable. Electron clouds repel each other. And um, let's see, and when you compare it to this yield over here, where with the benzene ring, right? We end up with a E alkene or a trans alkene, where basically the higher priority groups attached to the alkene are on opposite sides. So E kind of like E posit, and Z like same side, same side. Yeah. Okay. So um, next, uh, let's see. What I want, what I, what I also wanted to say was that the E alkene or trans product that we get, right? That's more stable because the big groups are on opposite sides. Okay. Um, Yes. Oh, God, I got cut off. Um, um, and also note that, once again, we get the same phosphine oxide as before. The oxygen gets um, plucked off, and then the carbon chains get snuck onto the, um, stuck onto the molecule. Ta-da! Right? All right, so that's basically it for this um, Wittig reaction made easy. I hope it was helpful. Um, if you guys like this video and would like to get updated when I make new ones, make sure to subscribe and tell your friends about this video if you thought it was helpful. Um, I also have a mechanism video for the Wittig reaction so you guys can see how the heck these, um, how the heck the yield reacts with your um, carb, uh, ketone or aldehyde. Okay? All right. Um, yeah. See ya.